The Incredible Journey of a Country Girl by Maggie Allitz. Do not mourn for me, but celebrate an amazing journey of a simple country girl's life. Never planned a thing. Just went with the flow of life. And, born to a never boring family. My grandfather Jean Rene Dupont was a scientist with degrees from the University of Paris, France. His ancestors were from Sweden and France. He spoke many languages. Sweet Grandmere Marguerite Rachel Dupont was from Normandy with the maiden name Fried. I turned out I was German and Jewish, too. I am a first generation American. I'm so blessed to be born in good old USA. She taught me to sew and cook and all the beautiful things in life. My father was born in Edinburgh, Scotland while his father was working in Scotland for the DuPont Corporation. So, my dad was so proud he had a dual passports. He held British and American passports. He loved this country, so. After, my grandparents migrated to Canada where my grandfather hated the cold weather and moved to Lemonster, an hour west of Boston, Massachusetts. It was known as the plastic capital because of all the cellulosic products that were made there. Finally, they settled in Lyndhurst, New Jersey. My dad was six years of age when he came to America. My dad was born in Edinburgh, Scotland when his father was doing some scientific work on cellulosic plastics in Scotland. My grandfather came to this wonderful country. To the most prosperous country in the world making myself and my siblings first-generation Americans. In the old days, when the banks crashed and had no money they gave you property. So, the bank gave my grandfather a house on 77, Myersville Road in Chatham, Township, New Jersey. My mom family roots were Sicilian, Greek and Albanian and Lebanese. She loved the opera and her best friend Marjorie Brewer would come to play our baby grand piano for my mom so she could sing her opera while my dad took us sailing on his schooner, and so many other adventures. I still remember climbing the 40-foot mast when a storm hit. I was scared to death as I was being thrown back and forth. Dad screamed at me to come down and I cried I can't. Step by step he guided me down the mast. My sister Claudette and brother Joseph were herded down into the cabin and the boat listed to the point where the books tumbled out of the shelves and water was pouring down the stairs and into the cabin. Ultimately, while approaching a bridge heading back to our dock we stalled the engine while going into reverse. The bridge operator was drunk and didn't respond to our horn. The tide was coming in, attempting to force us upstream and under the bridge. Our father courageously grabbed a rope and swam against the current to secure the ship to a piling and saved the day. Our mom Violetta Polara Dupont introduced us to all the cultural things in our lives. The opera and such. Mom founded opera at Florum its vocal competition named after her. My dad the outdoor adventures. There was always a folding army shovel and masonry hammers in the back trunk of the car so we could stop on a dime somewhere to hunt for geodes or fossils and arrowheads. He loved having me close to the ground as a little girl finding many artifacts from the Indians. And, a famous man named Volney Pfeiffer, the owner of Elio the Lion, who you see in all the movies of the past and Tarzan's Chim Cheetah would bring Celeste Holmes to all my parents' parties. Dad even helped Volney move some lions in our company truck. I must let you know, my dad James Maxim Dupont had the largest private collection of meteorite in the world. And, it is displayed at the Peabody Museum of Yale University in Connecticut, today. Shuttle and Apollo astronauts James Lovell and Garriott Owen spent their own money to find additional meteorites for that collection in Antarctica. This is an amazing story from Aunt Polly's B&B in Newcomb, New York. An old stage stop from 1845. Doug and I loved our home with stables with our horses. I was so proud of Doug driving his team of percrones into the great Camp Santanoni and taking groups of hunters in the fall. The camp was five miles in and people would sing Kenny Rogers' song to him at times, because he looked like Kenny Rogers. One day a lady had a large insect on her chest and Doug hit it off of her. Kenny Helms told her Doug put the insect on ladies all the time. Doug's good friend Kenny Helms was always joking. A great story from Aunt Polly's B&B. &B. A gentleman called from West Virginia and needed a place for a big rig to pick up an antique Maxwell car 
for a couple who would be staying at Aunt Polly's B. And B. They arrived and the couple told me, the gentleman with the big rig owned a large farm in West Virginia where the movie The Patriots, starring Mel Gibson was filmed. The gentleman slept in the big rig with the antique car to protect it. That morning he came in for breakfast and began talking about meteorites. So, I told him my dad had the largest private collection in the world of meteorites and showed him my dad's plaque. He was impressed. Three months later my brother Robert took his sales managers to a motivational speaker in Arizona. The gentleman started talking about meteorite, and my brother told him his father had the largest private collection of meteorites in the world. And, the gentleman said, no you don't. I know, a lady in the Adirondacks Maggie Elitz and her father had the largest collection in the world. My brother replied. That is my sister. Another man stayed with us from Little Switzerland, North Carolina. I told him that my brother Richard DuPont just sold his home in Little Switzerland to move out west. Shocked he responded, I just bought his house. Once again small world. In my senior year in high school in Chatham, New Jersey, we had a fundraiser selling magazine subscriptions. Everyone pulled me into their homes and bought my magazines and I won first prize. I realized, many years later is was my mom and dad sending us out to help others, with soup and food for the elderly and sick. That was their way of a thank you. I was so blessed in life to be born to a father who took us everywhere with him. From canoeing for pearls, fossiling, sailing and shooting with an old 22 the tin cans in the backyard, etc., but, most of all his outlook and perspective in life. Our father was very musically inclined and played a tenor guitar and piano until he lost several fingers in an accident at our company. Understanding the ramifications of his loss I cried and cried and cried. Our father said to me. If this is the worst thing that happens to our. Family consider ourselves lucky. I still remember my dad one night, telling us we all had to hunker down, because we had to send money to Mexico for a young boy with club feet. He always made us a part of things and teaching us to be kind to others and share what we had. I still remember my parents hiring a nurse to take care of the five of us when they both left for Mexico. This woman was evil. She bet on horses, brought all her friends in and drank up all the liquor. She even had my older brothers playing poker and their friends and took all their money. With the money for food for us, she gave us tiny portions of food and we all got sick with whooping cough. God bless Grandma Polara for saving us. My brothers and I were rascals. I loved to entertain my friends with my tea parties. I made from tea with Kool-Aid, now, the nurse would only give me water and no cookies the nurse gave us stale bread. Shaber is a witch. Mrs. Shaber is a witch with my little friends. We did one horrible and stupid thing. My dad told us not to touch the guns. We had just seen Bug Bunny with a shotgun. So, my brothers and I used sticks to pick the shotgun up out of the gun cabinet. Then, used a stick with Y to set the gun on and tied ropes to the triggers. Of course, the gun went back and blasted the big oak tree instead of us. What crazy kids we were. In the early days my dad sometimes worked three jobs to support our mom and five children and saving money for his future company Thermoplastics which bought our family good fortune. By the way I even assembled hula hoops which helped our company grow. A lucky night for my mom was a White Castle burger, which my dad kept warm by sitting on in his Model A Ford. I was called Margie Weepy because I cried about everything. An oversensitive child. My dad always had slideshow of his trips around the world. He showed us a picture of hundreds of people on the lawn of an India cutting grass with scissors. Of course, I cried and told him how cruel it was. Why, don't they use a lawnmower? Then, he explained. My dad always, could teach us the reality of images we saw. Yes, he said they are cutting with scissors, but now everyone will earn a little money to feed their families. I stopped crying. Yet, I never feared anything. As the story goes. My mom told us if we did not go to sleep, Stromboli was going to come and eat up us five siblings. Later, that night mom came to check on us and I was gone. They found me in the dark of night, they said. 
and my explanation was. I was looking for Stromboli to tell him I was a nice little girl and he should not eat me up. So, mom never told us that story again. One of the best stories in our lives. A farmer came to the house and asked my mom, how would like your chickens dressed or undressed? Well, we were so naive we thought the chickens would come in little outfits. So, when they arrived plucked and dead, myself and siblings climbed the apple trees in our orchard and yelled. Murderers, murderers they killed the chickens. At first, we would not eat them, but later when we were hungry enough we ate them. Looking back it was such an innocent time and funny. A boy who liked me walked ten miles to see me in the middle of a winter storm. I liked him with his tab hunter looks. My brother threw him out. Always, protecting my sister Claudette and myself. My poor parents had to take me to a doctor because I kept crying for a week. Finally, Tab and I started dating, I was 16 teen. I thought, a French kiss was being pregnant. So, a month later I was relieved of the stress and stopped crying. We lived in Chatham Township, New Jersey near the Great Swamps with lots of farmers. My dad would ask the farming after their plowing if we could go in their fields to search for arrowhead. We found hundreds of them and even four grinding bowls. Helen Harshare and I went to the White House while our fathers were visiting with President Eisenhower in the Oval Office. I just recalled it a few years ago. My brother Joe checked it out and it was true. Eisenhower, always said, beware of the military complex. Wise man till this day, I do not know why they were there. Our neighbors in Chatham W. are lovely people. The Hall's son family and mine assumed we would marry. He was at Yale University. And, I will say it a thousand times. I never planned a thing in my life. Tim had a boat for water skiing. He brought along a friend from Columbia University. My husband-to-be. After, a party at my home he returned that night throwing pebbles at my window. I told him to go home. And, after many beautiful letters from Columbia from him, he won my heart. Later, living in Harlem, New York we had a baby boy. The most beautiful baby. We named him after a poet. Robert Blake Sansone. Our son went to Columbia University, too. A blessing in my life. President Obama was one of his classmates. I am most proud of my son Rob being he left his wonderful job, with great advertising to help care for his father who was dying of pancreatic cancer. In Harlem, New York I had a traumatic experience that shaped my life forever. Going down to the clinic in Harlem, New York with my baby with money and identification always under my socks and my shoes, because of all the drug addicts. On the subway, I witnessed three young men slapping an old lady with a full car of passengers on it. Not one person helped her. I could not help with a baby in my arms and if they killed me what would happen to my baby? I vowed, I would never let that happen in my life, again. In Brazil, a man caught on fire pumping his carburetor and I stopped and rolled him in the grass. The General Foods lawyer were upset with me. I did not care what they, thought. After my husband left Colombia he worked for General Foods and then applied for a White House Fellows Program. And, was accepted. Now, the excitement began. He was special assist to the Secretary of Commerce to Secretary Maurice Stans. This was during the Nixon administration with Agnew as the vice president. As I have mentioned before, I was along for the ride. When Doug's dad was inducted in the Hall of Fame of Wrestling, Donald Rumsfeld and I stopped to say, hello. Doug was impressed. We met with all the top people in the Nixon administration. But, my favorite was Donald Rumsfeld and his lovely wife, Mrs. Romney, Senator Romney's mother. She sent me a lovely note. If you recall, Attorney General George Michelle's crazy wife Martha was my luncheon partner the day after she had locked herself in the bathroom drunk and called the press in every newspaper in Washington D. C. Had the story you could see she was a beauty in her youth. Wearing three in heels which was not becoming at her age in her late fifties. After the White House Fellow Program we were off to Mexico City. With each new country, I would tell my children. Guess what? Pack your toys, we are going on a new adventure. 
and they seem to enjoy the adventures. Where I met our maid Hillary. All home in Latin America come with a staff of people. Even a lady who irons your clothes. The story goes. Her parents were so poor they had to give her to a wealthy family so that she would not starve. Where she learned to be a maid. I learned she could not read or write, so off to school I sent her. I knew she was bright. After the first day of school she said. Senora, I do not want to go to school. There is a boy next to me and he makes me so nervous. Hillary married him later. So, happy for her. Rob our son and our daughter Sue went to a Mexican school and learned their Spanish. We're boys and girls skipped rope together. We had the cutest kitten named Gordito meaning fat. We took the Pesco's cabs with other passengers on the main road down to a beautiful park with row boats we would rent and row and row with otters, duck and swans swimming about. Rob and his friend would take turns. What fun we had. My brother Joe my youngest brother reminded me of a story of the corruption in Mexico. It is an incredible story. General Foods knew we were leaving Mexico in a couple of months and did not want to pay $10,000 per family member, meaning $30,000 for myself and kids. So, they decided to send us to the States and re-enter instead. Well, Mexican lawyers were not the best. They forgot I needed a letter from my husband to allow travel to Mexico. Women were taking children to Mexico and divorcing their husbands. So needless to say when I got on a plane for Mexico I did not have the right papers and would not let me board. No credit cards in those days. Desperate I called the Mexico president of General Foods. He said, do not worry just beg to board the plane and I will arrange everything. Tell them your husband is waiting in Mexico. Well, after begging and crying they finally let me to board with a sky marshal. Waiting in Mexico was a fake husband I did not know. Money exchanged hands. My poor children saw a strange man come and kiss and hung me. I was horrified and angry. As I mentioned before I love to take my children on adventures. While my husband was on a business trip, I took our children into the mountains of Toluca with Hillary our maid to meet her family. Drove my car to the base of the mountain with Hillary and the children. As we ascended the mountain Hillary told stories of bandits which made me a little nervous for my children. As we approached Hillary's home her mom was sitting outdoors on a wooden platform with tin roof grinding mesa or corn in English in a large stone bowl. What delicious torts she made us for dinner. We enjoyed every minute of our journey to live in the past. Hilary and I bonded so much more after our shared experience. I was always uncomfortable with the servants and chauffeur thing. But, I realized from my dad would say, they needed jobs and respect in their lives, too. I think of Hilary to this day and her wonderful parents giving her to a good family so she would not starve. People in America do not appreciate what they have. Then, off to Venezuela. A tropical paradise with horrible people. We were told not hire Venezuelans because of their rudeness. The Colombians will steal from you, but are kinder. And there I met Anna Mari Thomas, a Peruvian married to an Englishman, who gave me the tour of the city of Caracas. Tennis every day and friendship. Her only requirement is that I would do the same. Newcom, New York here I come. I gave many a tour in Newcom to honor my dear friend Anna Maria. A wonderful love story from Venezuela. After the Second World War many Germans moved to South America. I am so blessed to pass along this beautiful love story. Every day, I would see this beautiful blonde-haired lady and an elderly gentleman over my twenty-foot wall from my home. I thought how could such a beautiful woman be with such old man. We became friends, and she told me her story. During the bombing in Germany the children lived in cellars and bomb shelters. She was about 12 years old. A young German soldier came to the bomb shelter to keep her alive with little bits of chocolate every day. She had scarlet fever and there was no medicine. After the war, she remembered the name on his jacket and searched for him and married him. Next, stop Brazil. Wonderful mix of people like America. This is the country I had the most adventures of my lifetime. 
who has a houseboy Anthony with a machete in hand to cut my way through the forest jungles for orquids. Going through the Amazon River and jungle and seeing a slough in person, monkeys, parrots, etc. My best story in Brazil was a vice president in General Foods here through the grapevine about my hunting orchid in the jungles and wanted me to take him in with the Hulk Anthony. Once, we enter a scary place in the jungle where a large group of people were practicing macum a cross between Christianity and voodoo. There was a human skull, liquor and whirling crazy dancing. Of course, we traveled through Tout the Americas. During a vacation in Argentina Eva Perón and her husband were thrown out of office with rioting in the streets. Thank goodness we were in a safe hotel at the time. But, looking out the windows of that hotel you could see the joy of the people to be free from their corrupt government, who stole so much money from them. I was so blessed to learn so much from all the people who touched my life. But, by moving so much you do not develop roots. Newcomb, New York, became my roots. When Bob Bauman arrived in Brazil for the orchid hunt, I did not people making up stories so I took everyone, maids, chauffeur, etc. And being a different time of year and the stream I crossed was now torrid stream to hunt orchids. So, we had to pole vault the stream. Antony a hulk of a man with machete in hand, cutting through the jungles as he did for me many times before, almost hit Bob Bauman with the machete. I gasped and thought of a headline. Ambitious wife tries to slay vice president of General Foods as a headline in the newspapers. If Anthony cut Bob, how could we get him back over the torrid stream? I ask Bob to stay back a little more. Bob found 50 new species of orchids. Live and learn. My mom was visiting me in Brazil and we were on our balcony of our home when we saw a young man walking and falling. I asked our guard Mora to check the young lad. Sure enough we were right. The farmer where he worked would not give him his papers to leave. He had gangrene in his leg and wanted to go home to die. I asked Mora to take him to the bus station and put him on the bus to get him home to his family. The maids in our home were ferocious with me. I said, it could have been you child out there. They did not care. Living in Brazil and all Latin countries you live with guards around the clock. With little privacy, that is the downside of your life. Mora our wonderful day guard complained to my husband about my old car. He stated, the wife of a president of Kibben should have a new one. Then, when the new car arrived Mora told me to roll up my windows, because the bandits love the new cars. I just laughed. Being wives, cannot work in these country. I worked for free in a stained glass studio, gave out awards and watches to retiring workers. It meant so much to people to be appreciated. Volunteered caring for babies at the General Foods factory. As you fed the babies, baby boys cuddled and baby girls just stared. Before, leaving the States I volunteered at Head Start. A great program. There was a black child in my class who hated me. I would not give in and let him not do the same as other kids, like washing hands, etc. I sat down with him and told him I wished he would follow directions like the others so that I could take him down to the library so he pick a book out he would like. He finally did and I took his little hand and we went to the library together. When I left the States and had to tell him we both cried. After returning from Switzerland, I took my sister-in-law Carol hiking in Jockey Hollow, New Jersey. After hiking in Switzerland, I was fit as a fiddle. Carol was having problem getting up a hill. As I was pulling her up an incline a handsome gentleman Douglas Alabama Itz, who grew up in Iowa and West Point, came up and asked if could help. What was the beginning of my new life with an officer and a gentleman, from West Point and Vietnam veteran? A incredibly fast courtship. An everyday romance. On our honeymoon, Doug introduced me to the Adirondacks. And, after living my life in so many other countries, I did not really know my own beautiful country. This is where the Adirondacks and Newcomb became part of our wonderful lives. We decided to leave New Jersey and open a B and B called Aunt Polly's B and B where we met so many people. Robert Redford's daughter, a lovely young lady, people who would rent the whole B and B and design salvage ships, etc. What an interesting life we lead. I was so blessed to learn so much from all the people who touched my life. 
but, by moving so much you do not develop roots. Newcomb, New York, became my roots. Doug took over Tom and Dylan's horse business and drove a beautiful team of horses into the great Camp Santanoni for many years. I was so proud of Doug. I loved our time together up at the barn. Harnessing the horses, together. It is so soothing brushing beautiful steeds, cleaning stalls, etc. The simple pleasure of a country life. Which I had longed for after a hectic life we even had a winter wrestle in the snow every year. Doug looking like Kenny Rogers would have some ladies, from the Red Hatters singing to him. When, we left Long Valley in New Jersey, to start our new lives in Newcomb, Doug did not realize he had been in Newcomb before. He had volunteered to search with his West Point buddies for a lost child. They camped in back of the Newcomb school where food was available, for everyone, willing to help to find Douglas the young lad. Going through boxes and boxes of pictures, I found a letter from the government. Stating, Douglas A. Alex had earned a silver star for bravery. For running across a field with machine guns firing at him to get to a high point to call for air and artillery support to hit the enemy, to save his troops. Doug never knew what he had done to earn that silver star until I found the letter amidst all the boxes of pictures. He is my hero. That is why, all lives matter. No matter, black, white or whatever you want your men to return to their families. You love them all. Doug had great parents too. Verda May and Leroy Alitz a famous a wrestling coach at West Point and girls baseball coach for over 40 years. He even taught General Norman Svartskopf to wrestle. Doug's siblings, Denny, Diane, Kurt and Jeff. Doug was 20 when his brother Jeff was born. A wonderful family, having always been there for us. Doug has three exceptional adult children. Scott, Karen and Katie. We now have wonderful 15 grandchildren who have been very loving over the years. Joseph, Sarah, John, Cassidy, Griffin, Piper, Kyle, Kelsey and Corey, Jacob, Sophia, Dylan and Sebastian. I've been blessed in so many ways with lifelong loyal and loving family and friends. I've received and have given acts of kindness. If we are lucky we leave this world better and having had a good run. I would like to leave you with this final thought. People build sandcastles knowing full well the next tide will wash them away. In our finite world, nothing is permanent anyway. Even the great pyramids of Egypt will eventually wear away. Only God's love endures forever and this, not our accomplishments, is the source of our significance as human beings. In life, it's not the length of years which count, but whether we celebrate the gift of life and embrace God. May God bless you and all you love and care for.